and let's try to find a hue. Let's try to go for kind of a gold hue. So we're going to move down here. It's going to be somewhere between orange and yellow. As gold is somewhere between orange and yellow. And we're going to add a little bit of darkness to it, but a little bit of gray. It's kind of how you find gold. So right about here. So you notice it's got a little gray, a little, little white, little black. So it's got a little tone, tint, shade all in there. So it's kind of got this richness to it. It's got, if you look at the CMYK here, you can see it's got a little bit of everything. It's kind of got a nice equal um, ink. So that's how you kind of get those more neutral colors is there's not one color that's dominant over the other. They kind of all have a little bit of, of the different inks. So let's go ahead and click OK. That's a nice gold color that we picked right away. And let's build everything off of this. So what we can do, let's do what we did before. Add a little lightness. Just adding different, uh, let's do an off-white. This can go a little darker, so let's get our base hue. And let's go a little darker. So what we want to do is we find, want to find a really good pairing color. So what about, we have a warm color already. What if we paired it with a cooler color? What if we kind of got a blue, but let's do the same thing we did with the gold and add a little bit of gray, a little bit of white. Little, so we're kind of staying in the center here, just like we did before. So both colors will have a similar profile where they have a little gray, white, and black. So let's click on OK. So we have this nice kind of royal purple color and we can do different various shades of this and tints. And like before, we don't have to use all of these in our main color palette. It's great to have secondary colors and options and off-whites that we can use. So you can see how we can start to build a really nice color palette. So let's say we want to kind of stay softer, maybe eliminate these last two. Maybe we make that a little softer, but still darker. There we go. So now we kind of have this nice softer color palette. And what's great about Adobe Illustrator, and you'll learn a lot about this when we focus on software, is I'm going to select this whole bottom row. And let's say I'm not very happy with purple and uh, gold. Let's say I want to do gray. I can go up to Edit, Edit Colors, and I'm just going to convert to grayscale. And then now we have kind of a grayscale with the gold. Or you can go select all of these. Object, or Edit, Edit Colors. And we're going to go to Adjust Color Balance. And click on Preview. And you can kind of try out some different colors just to kind of see what could go really well. And as I'm adding a little green to the blue, just a little bit, not much, I'm getting this wonderful blue uh, softness here. And don't really like that color, but that's okay because we can drag this one over and take that color and add a little white to it. There we go. So that could be another really wonderful, soft, um, kind of elegant, a high-end color palette. So different from that super high contrast, bright, vivid color palette. And you can repeat this over and over. So we have kind of these two base hues. We can continue and do a couple other ones as well and find out, okay, we have gold, we have this blue. Uh, we can double click here and find out what would go really well with here. I mean, obviously pink would probably not be a good pairing with that. Um, but we have kind of some warm tones, soft tones, and kind of this blue, you know, it'd be nice to get something really neutral in there. Um, so maybe we can kind of try, and it could be as neutral as gray, right? So we can have gray with this color palette, and we can have different shades and, and tones of gray. If you ever want to do grayscale, it's all going to be on this left side. This is all grayscale, so white to black. So you have these two strong colors and then to do something neutral with it makes a little more sense. Because when you start to get three really strong colors competing, it's, it starts to be difficult. Um, so that's why I made this neutral instead of purple or yellow or green. None of those are gonna really pair really well because you have such strong colors here. So there we go, there's kind of a more subtle color palette. So hopefully this exercise helps you kind of get into understanding how do you actually select the colors how do I start the basis of building a color palette? Um, but understanding how to go lighter and darker and, 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 and different contrasts is a big key until learning how to build uh, color palettes. 
and I wanted to demonstrate how this works in Photoshop. So I have the color panel open and you're going to learn all about this a little bit later when you get into the technical side of the software. Um, but this is kind of how instead of the hue cube, you have lots of different options in Photoshop of how to display the color wheel. So here's the hue cube. This is what we did in Adobe Illustrator. So this will look very familiar to you. We just did all this, but you can also go down to the classic color wheel and that they just recently revamped this. Um, Adobe has changed this in the last couple years and now you have this triangle. So same thing with the hue cube. We're adding white, tint, shade, black, pure hue to the right, and then you can change your hue by going around the color wheel. So this is just a really nice handy color pickle, picker. You're going to also see this in Affinity Designer and Affinity Photo. They have a very similar triangle color wheel selection. Of course, there's grayscale slider. We can uh, find, pick a color and, and do the grayscale. There's a lot of different options here to explore, but I mostly use the hue cube and the color wheel. Those are going to be the two that we're going to use the most um, in graphic design and in design projects. If I wanted to show you that as an option, you can always change that in Adobe Photoshop or Affinity Designer or Affinity Photo.